Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick bit of radio controlled news to let any of you pilots out there flying walks now like me know that there's a new tool available to put the on-screen display back on the video after you've been flying. Well, just not on the video actually. Now I've been using a tool for quite a while, I talked about it a while ago, and it works absolutely fine, it's free, it's not particularly quick, but it does everything you need to. It also does things like chroma key, so it will output the on-screen display overlaid on a particular colour that's handy if you want to kind of put that over footage that you've been shooting. Most of us who are playing with this stuff don't bother kind of saving flight footage and other bits and pieces. Personally, for me, I'm a big fan of, at the end of the day, pulling the SD card out the goggles, uh, overlaying the on-screen display, putting together a little highlight reel for my flying buddies, so we can kind of have a little reminder of how everything went. And for this plane in particular, it's been very handy, because this is probably on its fifth or sixth incarnation. It was originally built with a co-pilot, and then we put analog FPV in it. Then I put things like the run cam split in it, so it could record in HD as well. Then I upgraded it to a flight control. Controller. Then we put the Brain FPV stuff in it, and it still supports that delivery. Then I put a Walksnail unit in it, one of the 1S units. I had various degrees of success with that. Now it's kind of a standard Walksnail unit, and it's running one of the little Menace RC Aeropods at the bottom, and it flies absolutely great. I'm currently trying to figure out how to extend the flight time, because in that journey, it's taken it from a 20-minute plane down to an nine minute plane and I'd love to get more 20 minutes out of it great on quiet days I wish ZOHD hadn't cancelled this and I'm slightly again slightly off topic right now but bear with me uh, this is probably my favorite plane out of all the ones that ZOHD ever made why well the whole thing is just held together with magnets you can just take it apart stick it in a backpack and then when it crashes some of the energy is kind of absorbed by all these bits popping off I was heartbroken when they retired this but anyway back to the video. So I'm letting you know that there's a new tool available if you want to do those kind of things where you overlay the on-screen display of your footage, but potentially you want that overlay to be transparent so you can put it on top of maybe people who are filming with hack cams or GoPros by the flight line, or maybe you have an action camera that you want to put the on-screen display on top of. It makes it an awful lot easier. And this tool has been created by Shannon over there at Sneaky FPV. I love all of Sneaky FPV stuff. He is really, really great in terms of the stuff he's putting out. So we've had loads of things like the custom fonts we've had for ages. I'll put links down to all these videos that explain this stuff. If you're flying with Watts now and you're not messing around with the sneaky FPV stuff, I would suggest you are missing a massive trick. Uh, it can change the way the on-screen display looks using his tools. You can add custom graphics that are supported by things like iNav. So, for example, I tend to put the pill in my display because, you know, that kind of makes me happy. But also, he's got a number of other tools out as well. And this latest one allows you to put the on-screen display either over the original video or to output it as transparent. Now there are a number of cool things that are part of this. It will automatically detect your GPU so that it's gonna render in the fastest way possible. It will automatically upload the OSD and SRT files when you browse for any one of them. It'll automatically detect the flight controller based on the font name used for the DVR recording if that's there. Automatic bit rate to align with the input DVR. Built-in font database so you don't have to mess around downloading stuff in here. It'll just automatically allow you to grab the file, which is great. I'm constantly having to find the files on my hard drive when I'm using the other tool. Support for NVIDIA, AMD, Intel GPU hardware and coding, so it's very, very fast. And as I mentioned, it enables you to also output the video as a true transparent OSD file. You can also select certain parts of the file so that you don't render the entire thing out if you don't want to do that. And currently it runs on only Windows. Playing with the original version, just for comparison purposes, to give you an idea, running on the same computer, this is the original version that I've been using for the past year odd since it came out. It'll render this just under 10 minute on-screen display file from that ZOHD dot I've just showed. It'll take just about four minutes to render out that 10 minute file. So not bad. When you download and install the new Sneaky FPV OSD app, it will 
prompt you that it needs to download the FFmpeg stuff. This can't be included apparently as part of the download. It's a kind of a licensing thing. Just say yes and it'll do it all itself. It'll actually go and get the file, download it all and actually put it into the directory. You don't have to touch anything at all. It's a little bit confusing if you're not expecting that to happen, but this is completely as it's designed to do. And once it's in, you don't have to do it again. It'll work great. So once that file's installed for the FFmpeg stuff, then the window will open and this is what it looks like. Now, all you need to do is click on browse, go to the video that you're about to use. I'm going to use the same one that I did kind of with the other stuff that I tend to use. It's about a 10 minute video. Um, you can see here it's about nine minutes, 54. It's 720, 1080. Um, it'll automatically populate the OSD file. Uh, it'll warn you that you need to select the kind of font file that you're after. So that's iNav Beta Flight or Audio Pilot. I'm obviously have an iNav ship here, so I'm selected iNav. And then you can actually select the different fonts that you have here. Be aware these fonts are the default ones that are provided from Sneaky. You can click the gear icon here. That will then start the gear stuff. Uh, this is the OSD font library manager. You can actually add an image up here. So if you have downloaded and customized fonts and you want to use those, you can absolutely do that. And then once you have added it, as long as it conforms to the expected criteria, it'll be fine. Then save it with the common name and then you should be good. The only thing just a pro tip is once you've done that, just come back in and I would reselect the flight controller firmware just to refresh the list and then you'll have it. But I'm selecting contracts, just the default one for this. Subtitle options, you can decide whether you want the subtitles on or off. Uh, when it does that, it'll kind of reset it to the beginning. Um, I don't tend to render it with the subtitles on because all the information's in my OSD. Then you have the options for the output processing so we can overlay on the input video which is what most people do however you can now output it with a transparent overlay and this is what i was saying at the beginning this is what makes it really powerful in that if you have maybe somebody on the ground filming or maybe you have gopro footage or run cam thumb footage that you want to put the osd over the top of all times using your video editor then you can and transparent overlay is a much nicer way of doing it and gives a cleaner result than trying to use things like chroma keying so i'll keep it on that it's going to output it to the default directory which is the same directory that i dragged the video from so all that's going to be automatically populated the encoder just clicked on detect and apply that will check your computer to find out what kind of video cards you're running and other things too i'd keep the bitrate standard bitrate which is what the other tool was using for a fair comparison the other thing you can do here is you can mask the start and end by default it'll do the whole thing but you can set the start and end bit so if you don't want to render out the entire piece you can move your cursor around and actually set that using here and you can save that mask too so let's see how long this is going to take four minutes for the same thing last time and we'll click on start processing so it's rendering the frames much much quicker than the other tool that i've been using until now okay so that's the frames done and now it's actually generating the video again this is significantly quicker than the other tool that I've been playing with. And there's a number of things in here that I haven't really seen before. The first thing is, is that this has the built-in fonts and the ability to manage them. That makes it super easy. You don't have to try and remember to cough them off the SD card. Uh, the built-in mask that allows you to kind of cut segments out the video. A lot, that's nice if you have a long video, but you want to render a little bit. The outputs available as transparency. I like that too. And I'll also like the automatic encoder detection wow okay that's done it that was really quick so this is significantly faster than the other tool and because i guessing it's actually detecting and applying all of the stuff that needs to be done for your particular computer to make this happen 
So the things that I'm impressed about with this is the tool is significantly faster than the ones that are around. It also access to the full font database without having to mess around. So that's nice and easy. The ability to crop, the ability to output transparently, and its ability to detect what kind of graphics guff you've got in your computer so that it'll use the most powerful setup and get the video rendered in the fastest way possible. Now there are two versions available currently, as you probably saw in the introduction. One is the free version that will apply kind of a watermark, but allow you to download and play with this. And there is a full version that is behind a paywall. Now, is it sad that it's behind a paywall? Well, in one way, yes, it is. But in another way, actually, I think that Shannon needs to be rewarded for the amount of time and effort he's putting in for all these tools. This is the only thing of his at the moment that we're all using out here that is actually behind some kind of paywall. And if you are really into your on-screen display and doing renderings and fast renderings of very large files after your walk style flights, and you also want the ability to do things like transparent overlays and other stuff as well, and just support the guy because he's doing such a great job and working so closely with the walk snail ecosystem to make sure all this stuff is just flawless, then... If you haven't already kicked him a couple of bucks back to buy him a coffee, which let's be honest, you should do, I have, then you can download this and give him the price of a couple of cups of coffee. And the nice thing is I've checked with Shannon. If you do buy it, then he is going to allow you, so long as it's a valid email you sign up with, he will let you know when new updated versions are available to download. So you're not just stuck at version one, which is out just as I'm recording this now, but as he continues to improve and evolve the tool, you'll continue to get access to that too. So Shannon, thank you for being such a star. Thank you for making such fantastic stuff with this. If you are a fan of Sneaky FPV and you like this stuff, do go and check the tool out. And if you like it, go and buy it. It's not a hill of beans compared to some of the professional tools that we get our hands on. And it's supporting somebody who is very active in the community and sharing all that goodness until now for completely no money. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.